Hosea chapter 6. Come and let us return unto the Lord. That's Israel speaking. This is going to happen. It really hasn't happened yet. This is at the end of the tribulation period. He has torn. He has smitten. That's the tribulation period. Now he has torn. Go over to Judges. Oh boy, I can't read my right. Judges 8, I believe it is. What the I say in that way. Judges 8 7. And Gideon said, Therefore, when the Lord has delivered Ziba and Zalimum, into my hand, then I will tear your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and wild buyers. Right, back to Hosea. What is that? That's chastisement. The tribulation period, scripture with scripture, keep the words of the Bible the same. With the cross reference, Jacob's trouble, the, the great tribulation period is a chastisement. And you find it in Hebrews chapter 12. He will heal us. The millennium. He has smitten the tribulation. He will build, bind us up. The millennium. Healing. I don't understand verse 2. After two days he will revive us. And the third day. Well that's the resurrection. He will raise us up. There's a resurrection. Now, I don't know what the two and three days are. As far as the tribulation period. But isn't it funny? Third day, you got ra raising, and you got Jesus Christ three days and three nights, according to the scriptures. And then you try to say something stupid like Good Friday, and he raises Easter Sunday. And we will live in his sight. That's the millennium. In the sight of God, the Lord, verse 1, Jesus Christ, all the other places in Scripture, it's too bad the Jehovah Witnesses don't know their Bible. Because the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, is going to be seated on David's throne in Jerusalem physically. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, that's God. Then shall we know. They don't know nothing now. If we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning. Second advent. Rising sun. When the moon, the stars, and the sun have been put out. He shall come unto us as rain. As the latter former rain into the earth. Now this former and latter rain that we see is the rain table of Israel. That it, it is not evoluted, but has been given by God at the times of their planting and the times of their harvesting, the correct times. It's also a period after the tribulation period where in the tribulation period there is no rain. Thank you, Moses. If there's a place where Moses has turned the water into blood and there's no rain. Well, God fixes that all up when he comes. When he goes into the land. O Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee? That's Israel, respectfully. O Judah, what shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is as the morning cloud, as the early dew goes away. So what is your goodness? It's gone. It ain't rain. It's a moisture. It ain't much. Compared to God's reign in verse 3. His goodness. 
Therefore I have hewed them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. And thy judgments are the light that goes forth. Listen, God's whipped, God's chasing, God's killed by the prophets, by the word, by the judgments. Because there's been no obedience. But the light still goes out. I don't mean goes out darkness. I mean it, it goes forward. Just because they rejected Jesus Christ doesn't mean, okay, that's it. The light went to the went to the Gentiles. It will return back to Israel. For I desire mercy and not sacrifice. And that's what King Saul told uh, I mean that's what Samuel told King Saul. You see, no, we're in the tribulation period. The sacrifices are back until the Antichrist stops it. So they're coming to Jerusalem, they're coming to the temple, and they're bringing their offerings. But you know what? We show up our three times of a year. That pleases God. That's enough. Three times a year. I mean, after all, the Baptists did it twice. God ought to be pleased. And then they go home and they beat their servants, they mistreat their wife, they, they, they swindle the boss, they don't care about the children. They got camel rage in traffic, whatever. And the knowledge of God, more than burnt offerings, they're bringing burnt offerings, they're bringing the lambs, they're bringing the oxen, but they don't know who God is. There's your today's Baptist. But we, we come to church, okay, what about God? I don't know who he is. I don't know what the principles of the Bible is. I don't know what the doctrines of the Bible is. I don't know what the fundamentals of the faiths are. I, I pick up this guy, and he's on YouTube, and or he's on Facebook, and he's got these strange doctrines. But he's got an open Bible. Friend, you only got your pastors and Sunday school teachers. You got in congregations, you got people who, who are the lifestyles of the Catholics, they're worshiping the moon, they, they, you know, this Bible, I mean, it's a Bible, but I don't know what the difference are in the Bibles, and, and you know, we got the Easter celebration come up, we got the sunrise service, and we, you know... <laughs> And they're, if they're saved, they're going to end up at the judgment seat of Christ, complete, total law. They're going to be dumbfounded. They're like, why? And I feel sorry for all the preachers and pastors and teachers. They're going to have to stand before God and explain to the congregation how wrong you are. Or for some of the preachers, pastors, and teachers, maybe the great wife's own judgment. When there'll be only two verses of 2 Corinthians 11, you are of the devil. Does not the Bible tell all of us the study to show thyself approved unto God? Now today we did the King James Bible. We got into the King James Bible as we're coming to the close of our Bible study. And I advise you to go read it because it's you know what's interesting. You can King James onlyism. And not believe it, not read it, not study it, not pray over it, not know nothing about it. There's some churches out there. Give, 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 tithe, 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 Malachi, tithe. And Paul said, hey, what comes out of your heart? Some preachers would be like, my bill's overdue to your church. You gotta get ten percent. And God's like, you gotta pay your bills. You know, if I don't pay my rent this month, this week, I don't have a place to live. I can't give my time. And and be like, Lord God, you know, the rent is due this week. And you understand the situation. 
I'm going to give $10 and $10 I give it lovely and joyfully. You got so many church. I mean, they're exactly the net worth that they're being given. And then they're waiting for that form from the, from the church so they can go do their 1040. God's not pleased with that. God rather have you give cheerfully in the church. And you know what? If he sent somebody, maybe even an angel, the Bible. Let, let me see how you're going to help them out. I like that. You know, David got great mercy from the murder and from the adultery, which is complete sin. But you re read to me where it says David brought the offering to the temple. Now, he went to the temple and offered. When the baby died, he says, listen, a contrite heart, a broken heart. That's what God wants. Saul gave all the offerings they had of the Amalekites, but that wasn't his offering to give. There's some people that bring their offering to church, and you know what? You stole it. You swindled it. You deceived. You lied about it. Hey. Imagine a crooked politician, a crooked sales, used car salesman coming and giving to the Lord what he deceived the people. I don't want that. That's dirty filth. Here, somebody. You, a Christian operates a, 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 a package store. And he brings his tithes from the liquor sale. God don't want that. Just don't bring the price of a dog or a whore. Imagine a whore. All week long she's going out selling her body and she shows up to church and she gives her money. <laughs> Why she give her money? Preacher said ten percent. How about preach that whore stop the sinning? What about preach that use car to get get uh, get get undeceiving, get truthful, get right? We want the money. We don't want the right. But they like men have transgressed the covenant, Israel. God set forth a covenant for them. They broke it. They have, there have they dwelt treacherously against me, God. We're getting that point in the church. Now, if you wouldn't know worldwide, all religions, Listen, the Catholics are getting just as bad. But they, like men, have transgressed the covenant. They have dwelt treacherously against me, God. Gilead is a city of them that work iniquity. <laughs> what would that be? Hollywood? Our Hollywood? If Hollywood's known for producing movies and films and television programs? You know, it's funny, I seen the other day, like I said, I look at the headline, and it was like 10, 12 actors and actresses that behind the scenes, they're really jerks to work with. Like they'll say with, with I'm not going to give my name, but there's a, they have a bad attitude, they yell, they scream. They, if they don't get their way to get a temper tamper, they're, one of them, you know, he, he's anti-Jewish, but he makes a Christian movie about Jesus. They do drugs, drink, crawls around with other women. And we're getting to the point right now, these people that do that, we st we still invite them into the house. That's our entertainment. Some of these women, they're, they're just whores. The way they dress, the way they act, the way they get paid. But you love their songs. Christians. 
and is polluted with blood, there's murder. America's getting filled with the violence of guns and, and stabbing and, and punching. There's a lot of blood. Man, you don't know if you're going to go through a drive through and order fly, fries if you're going to end up dead in heaven. What happened? I, man, we went to get some McDonald's french fries. How the heck did it? Well, you know, there was a fight down there and some guy didn't, didn't get his saw. And you got in the middle of it. You don't know if you're going to go to a mall, a movie place, or wherever, and somebody's going to pull out a gun. Bang, 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 bang. Guns don't kill. Well, that wasn't a popsicle stick. We have to have a lockdown for our schools. Friend, that word was not associated with schools. When I grew up, that word was associated with the prisons. Why is there so many killings? I'll tell you one of the reasons. It's because the Bible says if a murderer murders somebody, you are to take his life, and we're not taking the lives of the murderer. Oh, you know, we had two last week. Two out of how many? In three or four states. There are some cities known in America... And probably maybe England and, and the other area. You don't go there because people get killed. People get murdered. That's Gilead. And as troops of robbers. Troops of robbers. All of the roads in the, in, I'm going to say the Palestine Middle, Middle East area. The travel routes of the caravans and individual trips, they were known for places where there would be robbers. Remember the story of the Good Samaritan? There was that man that went out and he caught among thieves. Paul said he had pearls of robbers on his journey. The man that got saved on the cross next to Jesus was a thief, a robber. Judas, one of the twelve, was a thief and a robber. So the company of priests, uh-oh, is a Levite. No, it's not the Levite. Remember, we're in Israel. We are of the priests of the calves. Jeroboam's religion mixed with the Danite religion from Judges, Micah. You know, the Orthodox Church and the Catholic Church. <laughs> oh, clinky dinky, isn't it? So the priests murder in the way by consent. How can the priest murder somebody? Have you read Fox's Book of Martyrs? Where the Catholic priest throughout history has killed Bible believers, separatists? That even in Norwich, Connecticut, among the Congregational Church, they killed separatists? You, you would call them Baptists. You probably don't even know in your church history what a separatist is. But here we are, B.C., before Christ. <clears throat> and we got children of God trying to do right. We got people of God trying to do right. And there are priests that are killing. For they commit lewdness. I, God, had seen a horrible thing in the house of Israel, north. 
There is the whoredoms of Ephraim. Remember, sexual and material. And Israel's defiled. A man will sell out his wife and children so he can go play poker with the boys or go to the track with the men. Leave the wife and children home while you go out to the bar and have a good time. There are children today who don't even know their parents. I don't mean the parents. The parents, you know, they got 13 jobs. Because their outcome, their debit, is 13 times of what the income is. There's one more. He's got two jobs. He's finally got, you know, getting time off and this and that. And, you know, they, uh, all the kids have got a computer. All the kids have got special education programs. You redid all the kids' bedrooms. They all got brand new beds. They all got brand new bureaus. They got brand new toys. They got this. You got all this and that. And, well, no wonder the poor schmuck. Israel's defiled. A lot of people, we, oh, we, 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 go, we go to that vacation to Monkey Mountain, whatever. That don't do you no good with, with the kids, with your children when they're grown up. Also of Judah. Now notice how we've been getting into Judah. This is a book written to Israel, but... What happens in Israel goes to Judah. He has set an harvest for thee. In other words, what Israel's doing, all their sins, I doubt everything. Judah's like, hey, let me have some of that. That when we get to the book of Jeremiah, there's tr trouble, there's turmoil. There, there, there's famine, there, there's all these troubles and problems, and what is the reaction of the women? Well, since we left off with the queen of, the queen of heaven, we've had the need of one and all that, so we're going to go back and make her cakes and, and offer a drink off, and then she'll love us again, we'll all be back in peace and harmony and good joy. That's not the answer, Judah. And you listen. That start. That was the start of Israel from Jeroboam the golden calves. Israel never started. Never did get right. Judah had some good kings. When I returned to captivity of my people, now Judah's going to come back. Ezra and Nehemiah. Israel doesn't. Israel's still wayward. And Judah's wayward. And the problem goes about, and, and the Baptist church has got to get this because the Baptist church has coincided, co-mingled with the Catholic church today that the problem is these, these priests that are not priests. This religion that's not religion, that has its own feast days like God's. And they have sacrifices like God. And they have services like God's services. And that people think they're doing right. And they're not. And when men like Hosea and, and Isaiah, I mean, yeah, Hosea and Elijah and that step on the, the, the show, I know what it's like to be a singleton. When Elijah killed the prophets of Baal, what was the first reaction from Jezebel? I'm going to kill you. And how well did she mean it? 
That guy took off running. The guy just killed 500 prophets, 400 prophets of Baal, and he runs from a woman. The very same woman of Jabez, uh, not Jabez, uh, Naboth. All she does is sign some papers to have Naboth killed so her husband can get the gardens. This is how corrupt Israel is. This is how co corrupt these, these religions are. And friend, they're in the church today. 